Good morning, and welcome to our Tuesday morning Bible study here at the First Baptist Church of Meridianville. Today, we are all the way to the letter Q in our alphabet study, and today's word is quiet. Uh, it is a word that I believe is highly associated with the people that you know who have great spiritual power. I also believe that it's a word that is associated with the people that you know who have great spiritual peace and contentment, uh, simply because uh, quietness is one of those uh, easily overlooked qualities, one of those easy, easily overlooked um, concepts that, that is highly undervalued in our society. And so today, we're going to talk about the spiritual implications of Q, which stands for quiet. And I chose it because, partially, I believe that we have lost our ability to be quiet in many ways. Um, you know as well as I do that televisions play from dawn until dusk. When we get in our cars, we have talk radio on. When we get home, we're watching Fox News or some sports um, program, something like that. We are seldom quiet in our lives. Perhaps you've had the same experience that I've had. Uh, <coughs> that You got in your car, you were going somewhere, you're five, ten minutes down the road, and you realized, horror of horrors, I have forgotten my iPhone or I've forgotten my cell phone. And we turn around and we go back because our cell phones have become our pacifiers. And, and our cell phones are also um, sources of the noise that, that has crept in our, into our lives like kudzu. And so today, uh, I'm not intending to give us a guilt trip on the issue of quietness, not at all. Uh, what I want to do is lift up the concept and lift up the idea of how healthy and important a quietness is for our emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. And so today, um, as we think about quietness as it relates to Scripture, I want you to know that, first of all, Scripture makes it clear that the ability to be quiet is a is a very important ability um, in our lives. Um, there is great scripture makes it clear there is great spiritual strength, tremendous spiritual strength to be found in being quiet and still before God. Uh, the famous verse is Psalm forty six ten. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. That verse, be still and know that I am God, is found in Psalm 46. And the beginning of Psalm 46, uh, not surprisingly, goes, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Uh, let the oceans roar and fo foam. Let the mountains tremble as the water surge. The psalmist said, my world can be going absolutely crazy, but I can have trust and peace in God. And that trust and peace that he talks about in verses one through three is directly associated to verse 10. Um, in the book of Isaiah, God spoke to the children of Israel and said, Absolutely, under no circumstances, should you make a, try to make a political alliance with Egypt. Um, the children of Israel were being threatened on the north by the Assyrians. And God said, don't, um, don't make a, a political alliance with the Egyptians, just trust me. But Israel could not stand the pressure. And they felt threatened by the Assyrians so instead of sitting quietly, instead of waiting on God quietly and in peace, they did exactly what God said not to do. And the Assyrians destroyed them for it. Isaiah chapter 30, 
verse 15. For thus, the, for, for thus the Lord God of Israel, the Holy One, has said, In repentance and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust is your strength, but you were not willing. So often I find that when I'm in a tight spot, maybe you're like this, I get in a tight spot, I get maybe distraught and I'm, I'm filled with nervous energy and my mind begins to go to like 50 different ways that I can fix this tight spot that I'm in. We almost never think about, as the very first thing that we do, we almost never think about just stopping and praying and laying it before God. Uh, as I prepared this, I thought about the children of Israel uh, backed up against the Red Sea and Pharaoh's armies were bearing down on them. And the children of Israel did the very same thing I'm talking about. They began to let their minds go into a hundred different directions. And they came up with the idea, you know what? The best thing for us would be to go back to Egypt and become slaves again. That was an absolutely terrible idea. But they were making that, that they came up with that idea with, when their backs were uh, against the Red Sea and Pharaoh's armies were bearing down on them. Uh, that's exactly what they were thinking. Let's go back and, and let's become slaves again. Exodus chapter 14, verse 12, they spoke to Moses and said, Is this not the word we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. You know what Moses told, told the children of Israel to do? Moses said, Sit down and be quiet. Exodus 14, 13. But Moses said to the people, do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Uh, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again forever. And then in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Some of the worst ideas that you will ever have will come about when you are rushing around trying to stop some dam from bursting in your life. Instead of rushing around, what we need to do is to sit and listen for God, which is almost the exact opposite of what our human nature tells us to do, which is fight or flight, which is to go off running in the first direction that seems to be uh, seems to be appropriate. However, there is spiritual strength to find to be found in setting aside time to sit quietly before God. Uh, you want to be spiritually strong? I know you do. Uh, I want to be spiritually strong. In order to do that, we simply must have times where we are quiet. Even the Lord Jesus sought out times of quietness, both for himself and his disciples. Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. But the news about him was spreading even farther, and great multitudes were gathering to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But then listen to what God's word says about what the Lord Jesus would do. When, when all this pressure was coming upon him, as all these people were being attracted to him, God's word said in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, but he himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. The Lord Jesus himself would often find times to be quiet. I can tell you this, the people that you know who are filled with spiritual power, who are filled with contentment, who are filled with peace, um, these are the people who know the meaning of quietness. You say, well, Brother Tommy, I'm a young mother, or I'm a busy executive, and there's absolutely no quiet in my life. Uh, when I do get quiet, I fall asleep. And I would say that I understand that, uh, and God understands that as well. So I, I'm not here to beat you up over the fact that maybe you have difficulty finding a quiet moment. However, the vast majority of us 
the overwhelming majority of us, we have no excuse. Uh, the iPhone is our pacifier. The Fox News is our blankie. Most of us have no excuse for a lack of quietness in our lives other than we're in a spiritual rut that is filled with noise. Uh, do you remember the sign on the road heading through Canada? The road goes north through Canada all the way, all the way to Alaska. And the sign reads uh, that as you enter this road, as you cross over into Canada, and you get on this road that goes all the way through Canada up to Alaska, the sign reads, choose your ruts carefully because you will be in them for the next 1,000 miles. That is true spiritually. Uh, we must choose our ruts carefully. The truth is, there are good ruts and there are bad ruts. There are good habits and there are bad habits. If you and I are going to reap the benefits of quietness, we will have to, I'm going to have to, and you're going to have to, place a higher value on being quiet and still than we do now. Let me ask you this morning, do you need more spiritual strength to face the present challenges in your life? Do you need more spiritual strength to shore up the relationships that have gotten a bit ragged around the edges? Do you need the spiritual strength to be willing to allow God to sand down those rough edges in your personality that you, even you, are dissatisfied with? Do you need the spiritual strength to defeat a temptation that is wearing you out? Do you need the spiritual strength to get rid of some unresolved anger and bitterness uh, toward a boss or a friend or a coworker or a child or a relative? Do you need the spiritual strength to, uh, to allow God to drain some anxiety out of your soul? Uh, likewise, do you need more contentment? Do you need a fresh surge of peace um, in regard to your status in life? Do you need to, a way to drain away some of that anxiety? Um, do you know someone who is spiritually content and you want some of what they have? Uh, or perhaps you just need some direction. Are you facing some issues in your life and you need a clear word from God? I can tell you that according to the word of God, all of those kinds of things are clear benefits of the person who is willing to be still and to just spend uh, some time with God in his word and in prayer. This is not rocket science. And so I'll give you just some quick encouragements. First of all, start small. Don't start with an hour. You know, that, that's going to be uh, unrealistic for you. Start with five or 10 or 15 minutes. Just set aside, uh, today, set aside 10 minutes of your day Instead of being attached to your iPhone, uh, set aside 10 minutes to just um, be quiet before God. Begin to train your spirit to accept quietness. Then secondly, after start small, start immediately. Don't start next week. Start today. Um, I would also encourage you to, number three, start with anticipation. I can promise you those things that you want, the contentment and the peace, they are byproducts of your willingness and my willingness to be quiet before God. Now start with some accountability. Tell your spouse, tell a friend, I'm going to work on becoming a, a, a more settled and quiet person. Uh, start strategically. If you're not a morning person, don't do mornings. Um, if you're not an evening person, don't do evenings. You know when the best time is most realistic for you. There's no time that is more spiritual, morning, lunch, or evening than any other time. Uh, so start strategically in a way that fits your personality and your schedule. You could start as a team. Uh, tell your wife or tell a friend, you know what? Why don't you uh, and I both start trying to 
focus on becoming more quiet in our lives and start in faith, knowing that Jesus himself will honor your willingness to seek him through quietness. And quietness and in trust is your strength, said Moses. But today I want to thank you for studying God's word with me. And I look forward to hearing about the benefits that you have received as you have focused upon, uh, focused upon be becoming more quiet before God. Bless you. Have a great and blessed day.